It's come to my attention on the Gabler channel that we have reached 200 subscribers. I know, right? I can't believe it either. So some of you might think, well, it's just 200 subscribers, but it's kind of a big deal for me. <laughs> if I'm not gonna, if I'm gonna be brutally honest with you. So I put up a little poll on Instagram recently saying, what would you guys wanna see for a 200 sub special? Either a Q&A or showing off my entire DVD collection. And I thought, you know what? Sod it, we're gonna do both. So we're gonna start off with the Q&A and once that's done, I'll get into the huge task of going through my entire DVD collection. I'll do Blu-rays as well, but I might split those into two different categories. Anyway, let's get on with this. So a few of you guys um, had some very interesting questions that you wanted to ask me and um, let's get through them. But before we begin, I would like to say please subscribe. It is free and also a massive thank you to everybody who has subscribed and stuck with my, you know, random scheduling, uploading ass self for the past two years, I suppose. So yeah, thank you, thank you very, very much indeed. So my good friend Matt Freck asked, views on indie distro companies, Scum Video, Future Productions, Banana Box Releasing, etc. Um, I've heard of Scum Video, I'm very aware of their work, Future Productions as well, and Banana Box, um, I kind of know Herschel. We've spoken before on the Open Casket podcast with um, Spooky Celluloid. Um, my views on them is I, I do love the idea of, you know, releasing your stuff and, you know, you have full creative control over it. These companies have found their audiences and that's fantastic. Um, pricing wise though, I mean, Banana Box, obviously Banana Box is a, a bootleg company. I don't know what they've done so far. I haven't really been up to up to date with Banana Box in a while, but I remember them having bootlegs of a really obscure, like Japanese weird porno stuff. And I remember all that stuff and, you know, selling them for quite cheap. And, you know, that was the whole gist of it all. Um, Future Productions, I've not had a bad experience with Future Productions. Um, whatever I've bought off of that label has come on time um, for a decent-ish price. But um, what I won't get over is the ridiculous pricing of the used screen props, which probably went for like, I don't know, probably bought for 50 odd dollars and being marketed for like more. I don't understand that um, business strategy. Scum Video have got a very interesting portfolio of work that I've seen, but I love the DIY aesthetic of, you know, indie distribution. I guess that's why I started Gem Collector, you know, making things relatively cheap and affordable and, you know, as high quality as possible, really. So, yeah. Matt also asks, favorite indie gore movie? Ooh. You've really put me on the spot here, mate. I think my favorite indie gore movie has to be Brain Dead. Um, for a while, that was the most goriest film ever made, but then the Fede Alvarez Evil Dead kind of <laughs> took over for a long, long time. So Brain Dead all the way. Early Peter Jackson is amazing anyway, but Brain Dead is just absolutely gory bloody glory -ness. <laughs> I made a pun but um <laughs> but that's yeah that's definitely some I would recommend to anybody who loves gory cinema um definitely watch that it is just bathed in red and Matt's final question was favorite mixtape ever Ooh, I'm gonna go with borderline four and um banana box's dick twist dick twist made me laugh hysterically and it's just ridiculous, and I, I did really enjoy it. Our good friend Spooky Celluloid asks, what's your go-to Greg's order? Ooh. He's done that on purpose, he knows I'm a fat bastard. It depends on the mood, if I'm hungover, I'll go for like a, a standard sausage roll, or maybe even, I don't know man, it's, it's difficult. Because I don't, I don't know man, it's just, oh. You've got pizzas in there, you know, you've got the sausage, bean and cheese melt, you know, you've got the steak. You've got everything there. You've got the nice little like chicken wedges they have. Oh my God. I could talk for hours about Greg's orders, man. Depending on how hungry I am, I'll go for sausage bean and cheese melt. I know the meat in that is questionable. And we're also gonna go for a 
all standard sausage roll. That's it. That's my order. The drinks there are way too expensive, the coffee there is watery as shit, and the desserts there are just too sickly. But yeah, the savouries definitely um, get on there. America, get Greg's in your country. I don't give a fuck. Spooky also asks, <clears throat> would you drink a 2.5 litre of Frosty Jacks with me? It's basically just a three pound bottle of really rough cider that you see every smackhead in my hometown on. Um, not so much Frosty Jacks, but more like the really strong ciders or really strong special brews. It's one of them, it's just undrinkable. It's, it's basically designed for alcoholics because um, it's just cheap, rough and nasty. And the answer is, depends if you're buying it or not. Spooky also asks, if you were given an unlimited budget, what kind of movie would you direct? I honestly have no idea. Hmm, I'm on the spot again, can you tell? Do you know what I would direct if I had an unlimited budget? If it's unlimited, I would bring back Carrie Fisher from the dead. I said that right. Bring her back from the dead and re... <laughs> and remake the entire current trilogy of Star Wars films properly. I know Disney had their nasty little claws on it and, you know, the first one of the series, The Force Awakens, got me really excited for Star Wars and then it went... Argh. It just went to a massive nosedive. Um, I would do it properly, the proper reunion, the proper send off to all of the characters. Obviously, kill them all off, and you know you gotta have the old characters die off for the new ones, maybe. But um, I would do it in a very respectful way, in a way that sort of carries the torch onto the next generation of Star Wars characters. Not what we got initially. That was absolutely atrocious. So yeah, with that unlimited budget, I would recreate the current Star Wars trilogy and make it actually decent. My good friend Bethan asks, how many crabs could you take in a fight? Depends how many crabs it is. Um, if it's Japanese spider crabs, I'm going to die. Um, if it's just generic spider crabs, maybe I could take on about 20 of them. Um, if they're in water, I'm stuffed because they can all like jump about and pinch me and you know put holes in my fucking scuba gear and I'll just die. But if it's on land though, they're all just getting squashed. So um, yeah, definitely about 20. Maybe about two underwater. I don't know. <laughs> Bethan also asks, would you make a movie about someone taking 67 crabs in a fight? Um, I definitely would because um, I like working with even numbers. And I think that would be really, really good. You know, budget, budgetary wise, you know, we could get them on, have their own trailers and that. You know, we could have them on set at Pinewood. It'd be a really good idea. I reckon it'd work. Um, it would have to be like a, a kung fu movie, wouldn't it? Yeah, a kung fu movie about someone fighting loads of crabs. I think that could work, definitely. Um, I'm gonna pitch that idea to some executives someday. Bethan also asks, do you like Branston baked beans? I think she means Branston baked beans. Um, yeah, Branston baked beans are superior because Heinz over the years used to be awesome. Now they're just shit and watery, they're too overpriced. Where I work is two pound ten for a fucking tin of them, and you're just paying for a brand. Um, your best bet is a Tesco's brand or a Sainsbury's brand. Um, 99p, you can't go wrong with that. You're gonna get more juice to bean quantity, I suppose, but you want Branston on your toast, definitely. And for all the Americans out there who think beans on toast is weird, give it a go. I think you might like it. And if you do like it, awesome. Welcome to the club. And finally, from my good friend Kirsty, the crazy bird lady. Why are you gay? Who says I'm gay? Hmm? Who fucking said I was gay? Who told you, who told you my business? Hmm? Who told you my business? I swear to Christ, if you're working for the FBI, I'm gonna kill you. You are gay. Fair enough. Um, that's it, guys. That's the 200 subscriber Q and A. Um. Like I said before, thank you very, very much for subscribing, watching my content, maybe having a laugh to it, enjoying it, whatever. Um, it's been a crazy couple of years. Um, it's been on and off. Um, I've almost nearly quit, which is really silly, only because of personal issues. But um, yeah, it feels, it feels kind of weird. Um, at the time of recording this, I have 201 subscribers. so. Less 
wait till we get to our 300. But it isn't over yet, my friends. We've got a shitload of DVDs to go through. 